redneck, but you know what? I don't care. It works. Um, got the uh, triple G DRO set up. That's pretty much the whole reason I took the mill apart is because I was going to put the DRO on it and I wanted to have it on the table and I had to obviously take it apart to drill and tap various pieces. So um, there's nothing special about how I mounted the DRO, but I'll show you. Uh, the Z axis, you know, I uh, had to drill three holes, two in the Z axis, one in my, um, call it my carriage, I guess. You know, that comes down. I got, I think, um, just over 12 inches of travel on my Z. Uh, the Y axis, I've seen people mount them. I got, you know, a few of these ideas off of uh, YouTube. You gotta love that place. So I just, uh, this is actually part of an old aluminum ladder. And I just used that for for a guard for the most part. I actually got this centered because I have enough clearance to center it. Uh, I don't know if, I don't think stock, I would have had enough clearance to center this. I probably would have had to mount it over on one side or the other, and that's stupid. So I got it centered. Um, and it's obviously just drilled and stuck in there. I've actually got a, let's see if we can see it, guys. Well, nope, but anyway, I had a nice size gap in there, so I just took a nice hefty little spring and stuck it in there and then put the screw in. So essentially it's kept in uh, in alignment by a spring against a screw. I may have to adjust it a little bit here and there, but it is uh, seems to be fine. And then, um, yeah, the uh, my other axis here, I put this one a little further back because... Um, I have been thinking and I could, you know, you could easily with a little bit of modification, maybe make a piece that screws on and then set screws in. So it pulls your handle out a little bit and you can push cause you have where this, uh, where that metal spot is on these things stock, your screw pretty much comes all the way up to your, to your uh, retainer here. So you actually have almost a three quarters of an inch of screw in there that doesn't get used so why not push your screw back and get you know at least another half of that so I actually went a little bit long because I could make it to where I push it back even further but with how it is from front to rear it actually comes like five eighths inch over each side so uh, I'm happy with that um, what else did I do here, guys? Oh, I put brass strips. This is just, uh, thin brass sheeting. It's some of the, whatever you'd like to call it, um, PVC on one side. So, and that's what I used for all three axes. Um, my X-axis, getting that on there when I put that sheeting in there, uh, I actually had to take my whole table apart again, which was a pain in the ass, and put it in from the side because it was just, you know, a minuscule amount short of sliding down in there. And I actually tapped it a couple times with the uh, with the dead blow to see if I could get it to slide past because that's how close it was. But it uh, it didn't seem like it wanted to go, and I wasn't going to force it, so I had to take it all apart and put it in from the side. And if I do take it back apart, I'll probably grind just a hair off of the inside of this dovetail on the top and it will slop right in there um, all these are just you know they're uh, essentially just that piece of brass I bent them over on both ends so they're not going to come out you know so it's stuck in there and uh, the way I did it is when I had it off I uh, I used my gib strip I put the brass in I put my gib strip in I put some, uh, just some little rubber, some of these little cheap clamps on there to hold it all together. And then I just, uh, used my little manly hammer here and just tapped it over. Easy peasy. And those actually make a big difference. And the reason I did those is because now that I got it all put apart or put apart, put back together, I am going to make actual brass gibs for the other side. So I'll have two contacts of brass for the skinny parts. And then my big flat surfaces, I'm just going to leave cast. <coughs> okay. So, this is the part that I think you guys will really get a kick out of. 
um, DRO power supply. Um, for these ones, I will admit these are. At, I'm gonna probably build a little plate so I can kick out the bottom of these a little bit because how I got them mounted. If you guys can see this, but it's mounted on this plate here, which has my box mounted on it too. My floppy box. Um, but yeah, these are. You know, they're called Easy View Drill, but the, the simple fact is you want to build these to where they're, when you put these on, to where they're pretty much face directly at you. And these ones have a slight down tilt. So when I have them on and I'm standing at my height, which is 6'4", I can read them, but they're kind of grayed out. Whereas if I come down here and look at them, they're nice and black. So keep that in mind if you put any of these DROs on as you want it, where that DRO is slapping you right straight in the eyes as opposed to um, tilted up or down uh, so <coughs> that's smoker's cough there guys good habit to quit okay so these they sell the power supply um, eBay I think once like seventeen dollars or something per DRO power supply uh, you can get them from Grizzly for 10 bucks or something, but I'm on a screw Briz Grizzly uh, boycott trip for life. So I uh, made my own power supply. Went down to our local Radio Shack, which is becoming more a, uh, a consumer electronic store as opposed to a, an actual electronic store. And I bought out their last four, um, whatever you want to call them, barrel connectors. These are size... Let me check just so I don't give you guys the wrong size. Ain't no point in spending money you don't have to. I had the right drawer. So these are size eight, and they call them coaxial. Um, if you, I actually soldered all my connections because, well, why the hell not? So with these H coax connectors. So you guys give you a heads up. The inside is positive, the outside is negative. I mean, I soldered all these connections, guys. You know, these are soldered. These three wires are soldered together into here. These were already tinned. And, well, I didn't solder the ones in there, but... Uh, no, that's a lie. I did solder the one pair. And I'll show you that here in a second. So what I made this power supply out of was uh, a treadmill... Um, power supply, one of the ones that I discussed earlier, not the actual um, power supply for the large DC motor, but the secondary power supply out of the older treadmills. And like I said, there's a million uses for them, don't throw them away. So let's uh, take a little look, and don't mind my box, it, uh, I chopped it up, I originally had, I got a nice little uh, suburban propane furnace over there in the corner, and this was the original box for it, but I think I'm going to make a new... Uh, you know, I just had it for a flip-on circuit all this last winter. So when I got cold, I'd go over and turn it on. But I think I'll put an actual thermostat on it this year. So I said, screw it. I'm going to harvest the box. i got about half a dozen of these things. But um, why drill another hole if I don't have to? Uh, so this is the other power supply I talked about. And let me give you a rundown on this real quick. Um, from what I showed with testing... Uh, this one up here, it's the one that says ground, 5 bolt, and INS incline sense. Uh, both outside pins are 5 volts. The inside pin is uh, ground. The next one over is ground, 5 volt, tack. Let me grab my flashlight again. Maybe if we kill this light. Yeah, it probably doesn't do much good. But yeah, the next one over... It is ground 5 volt tack same thing both outside pins are 5 volt and they're they're actually reading 501 5.01 so and the insides ground uh, this one is it says SNSR on top it's actually the uh, the hall sensor for the treadmill this one reads 5 volt and you see I got the little two prong plug I originally hooked it up to this one and it wouldn't give me enough power to power these so even though it reads 5 volts I don't think the amps are there they are in the incline sense however now this one 
it's got all the pins. I'm not going to read them all off. Uh, the end pin, obviously it says G GND is ground. The other one says 9 plus, or plus 9 volt, I should say. And that was actually reading at almost 12. Um, and then I didn't really go into much of the other ones. This one, if you use it for something else, is your uh, potentiometer control. Uh, I put some tape over here and here. These are actually ACs. Both these are hot. And then this is your ground. Uh, these are both ACs. One's hot, one's your ground. I put tape over it just because the uh, last thing I need is to forget to unplug it and stick my fingers in there someday. So um, it's not complete protection, but it's better than nothing. I wired a toggle switch in line. And I just, you know, I pretty much just use this box just to keep it up here, keep the dust out of it. Uh, it was, this was a lot better than using another box too because I can close it up and I still got that hole in the front so it'll allow some heat to dissipate. And uh, I guess let me show you guys what happens. So I flip my little switch. You see the lights in the box come on. And there's my DROs, all three of them. And uh, it didn't cost me nothing but a little bit of time because I used, well, okay, I lie. Um, these were about four dollars for the pair, so um, seven bucks or something, eight bucks. So it cost me eight bucks as opposed to thirty to forty freaking whatever that they want for the actual DRO systems. Uh, so these don't have any batteries in them. Um, they're strictly running off the electric and I don't know if you guys can see this but you can't see them and you can see them great so that's what I was talking about and just to show you there's all my batteries so those are running off nothing but electric um, well shoot guys uh, I don't think I missed anything um, if you have any questions when you turn that off it does take a few minutes for them um, to uh, bleed all the power off before they die but you know what whatever um, okay so I don't think I missed anything if you have any questions uh, don't hesitate to ask if you like any of the content uh, give me thumbs up or subscribe or something I think I'm up to two subscribers Woo you know what? I don't really care if you watch my shit you watch my shit if you don't more power to you you probably know more than I do anyway so uh, yeah I guess you know, this one I ran the cord underneath, comes up, that one ran the cord there, that one I ran the cord there, just kind of zip tied them all together here and there to make sure they don't uh, get anywhere they're not supposed to. Uh, hmm, 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 hmm. Yeah, damn guys, I'm, uh, I'm spent. I don't know what else to say. Um, yeah. If I think of something else, I'll make a video just on that. How's that sound? Just kidding. So, uh, yeah, that's uh, my mini mill. Six and a quarter, 11 and eight, 12 inches plus up and down. It's a hell of a lot better than stock. It has taken quite a bit of time, but uh, I'm happy with the fruits of my labor. So, I would like to, um, I think, put a bigger handle on the front. And I do have a power feed planned as well. I have Buku electric motors. I take apart everything I can. It's, uh, you know, old drills, whatever. Battery drills. Not necessarily electric drills. They're still worth something. But, you know, you can pick up all kinds of tools with electric motors for um, free. If you keep your ears open, scrounge around, man. There's no shame in uh, making somebody else's trash into your treasure. So, um, yeah, that's, uh, damn, that's about all I got. I'm gonna, I'm gonna play with this thing. You guys have a good night.